and welcome to Sharon on the sofa. But as you can see, we're not on sofas and we're on chairs because we like doing things a little bit different. Um, but before we begin, I just want to say a really big thank you to Stapleford Park House and Estate for letting us use their beautiful home to come and film in today. So we feel really honoured. And I feel even really more honoured to have Rachel Argrave with me from um, RDZPR. Gosh, you know. <laughs> First of all, before we begin, I, I want to just get to this story because, <laughs> this, you know, as you can see, viewers, we have a beautiful dog with us. Um, so, tell us a little bit about, you know, this situation. What's going off here? Uh, Normally, well, people bring a dog in their handbag, so it's quite nice to see it. So it's quite nice to see a bigger dog. I'm, I'm not a handbag type of a, a girl, really. So, uh, so this is Zoe. She is the Z of RDZ. Um, which was named uh, when my accountant was saying, for the love of all that's holy, Rach, what are you going to call the new business? And I just put her lead on, and her brother is a Dalmatian called Dyson, the D of RDZ. And uh, the thing with Dyson is when you put his lead on, you don't, you don't wait. So me being on the phone to an accountant was not good. Uh, so he was banging his paw on the door, kind of going, come on, mum, we're walking. And I said, yeah, I told him, I don't, I don't care what you call the new business, really. You know, let's just, I, I've got to take the dogs for a walk. And he said, well... We need, to, uh, we need to get it sorted, so I just said, I'll just call it R, Rachel, D, Dyson and Z, Zoe. Can sit down. Um, and, uh, and yeah, RDZ PR was born. So this is the Z of, of, of RDZ. And how long has it been around for? How long? Um, RDZ, I think we're just going into our third, third year, so not that long. Um, but uh, it's a, a new company after the sad demise of my previous agency. So I used to run a fully, full agency, a full Marcoms marketing communications agency called the Phoenix Partners. And sadly, I lost her in 2012 after several body blows. Uh, she went into liquidation the day before her 12th birthday. So hence why I wasn't particularly bothered what the new company was called. You, you would think, well, you'd surely be really excited about what your new company is called. And I was a bit kind of... Oh, and grieving and uh, a bit all over the place so hence why I was a little bit kind of what you call it what you want to don't really care uh, but it came out good in terms of RDZ bringing in Z Dyson and Zoe so but <laughs> you, you listen to that in RDZ and and just you being so honest about what you've been through that in itself takes courage because you know what I'm going to forget the cards because I just think first of all I have to congratulate you on sitting there and just saying that because there are so many people that gloss over things or or when things happen in business and they have to reevaluate and they have to refocus but they don't want to talk about it um, and from one businesswoman to another businesswoman I lost someone a couple of weeks ago because I was told you know you've not got 100% success rate in business what and the what the heck does 100% success rate in business look like I, I wonder but yeah but yeah and every all you know all these interviews are all around resilience good god you've got like massive resilience to to not only come back from that, but also to create that because your PR and everything you do and anybody that Googles you or look online, you, you are bold, fierce, and if I'm being honest, not to be messed with. <laughs> so, well, that, that's you so you, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you die? You should. So, so, so to have that and then to come through that, that in itself takes a lot of balls and a lot of courage. Well, I think it's very kind of you to say so, but I think one of the things that came out of, of the loss of the Phoenix Partners was um, the amount of friends that I found I had and um, the amount of people who kind of sidled up to me and said, uh, you know what, actually it happened to me X years ago. Um, and if it wasn't for those kind of people who were also brave enough to, to say it happened to me and it's not the end of the world and it might feel like it, appreciate it feels like it right now, but it isn't the end of the world. You're okay. You will be fine. Um, two pieces of advice don't make any big decisions quickly um and give me a call when actually you can you can say in all honesty it's the best thing that ever happened to me that was one of my friends and it took me 18 plus months to actually say that um but it it, it has been i mean i wish i had been uh, more clever to have not had to go through it but um it, things happen stuff happens and it's really how you deal with it um, and because I've gone through it, I was able to help a friend who also went through it um, February of last year. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about just having, um, it's having an acceptance about it 
Um, and I don't think, whilst, whilst it's not the world's best thing to happen, I think it's also, um, it's not the world's worst thing either. I, you know, I never set out to fail in business. The company was, was to all intents and purposes, a rocking success, turning over 1.69 million quid, 40% growth net profit. Um, into the recession, that was you know, cruel times for us, but we managed to survive. But you know, things like Deepwater Gulf of Mexico, when, when clients cancel a million quid's worth of work in three phone calls, uh, perhaps, I, you know, perhaps, perhaps other better business people would have seen that coming. <laughs> I didn't. So, you know. But it's, um, I think another reason why I bought Zoe today, because I knew that the topic was resilience, is the resilience that these, she's taught me. Um, she was a rescue dog, down on her luck. Um, and just seeing how they respond, how they um, are able to uh, trust people again, are able to enjoy life after going through some pretty hideous times. I think for me, it, it kind of made me think resilience isn't just about getting on with it and mm. knuckling down. And it is, for me, resilience now is about when I feel the need to be resilient, it's a, a question mark about well, what, what am I feeling the need to be resilient about? And is it more a question of whether that is something that should be in my life or not? Am I, am I back to balance? Do I need to rebalance and rethink about this? Um, and a lot of that has come from being surrounded by now happy hounds. Uh, who've been resilient and gone through a lot of resilience in their own lives as well. And, and you do so much, and for the viewers and the people watching this who won't know what you do, because, you know, you've got a very successful business, you're, you're really busy, you manage projects, but then also you've got all these other animal projects that you do, <laughs> haven't you? Um, so do you want to just tell us a little bit about that? Just because can, let's raise the profile of what you actually do to help, you know, other dogs like Zoe, because... As you say, they are they they just trust us wholeheartedly, and the way people mistreat animals for me it just drives me. It, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's animals is, is the right thing. I mean, obviously Zoe is, is a hound, and and uh, I have five now. Long story. Um, five. Yeah. Just to check, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bonkers. Anyway, uh, but I have five, uh, four of whom are rescue. One behaves as though he's a rescue, um, and isn't. But anyway, um, it's. It's, if you can do, I think I'm a big believer, people did just did a little bit. I think sometimes we think that the little bits don't add up. Well, it's only a couple of quid that somebody's asking for. What difference is that going to make? Oh, it's only a home to Zoe. What difference is that going to make to the huge amounts of dogs worldwide that are euthanized each and every day? Well, it's made a difference to her. She's got a home. Um, a couple of quid times by 100 people who give a couple of quid, all of a sudden is the difference between a shelter being able to operate or not. Um, so it's, I think it's the, for me with working with, I, I work particularly with a, a Bulgarian rescue called Santa Paws. Um, it's, it's about helping a group of people who, best intention of the world, making a difference locally uh, and, and now into the UK as well with, with the rescue of animals. Um, but they need some very simple things like Domestos bleach. Um, we did a Domestos derby. Yes, we did, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, and we had ladies coming up at networking and chaps giving me, you know, are you the Domestos lady? Give me bottles of bleach. So you're also known as the Domestos lady. Very, yeah, yeah very, okay. very, yeah. No, How does no that work? street cred at yeah. all. <laughs> I just look like I'm some sort of dealer, but not in a cool way. But anyway, but Domestos is one bleach that will kill the parvo virus, which is in, in um. countries like Bulgaria. It, it kills puppies and, and dogs on a, a horrifying regular basis. It's a nasty, nasty disease. Um, but bleach, Domestos bleach, will get rid of the, the virus. Some other bleaches have not proved to be so effective. Well, good old Wilco's was uh, having a bit of a sale on. Uh, Domestos brought out a two-litre bottle, and they were charging £1.50 for it. So we ended up having this pot of money from people going, do you know what, I can't even be bothered to go to the supermarket. I won't remember, I won't see you. Here's two quid, five or ten, or some people gave 50 quid. Go buy bleach. So we ended up with nearly 300 litres of bleach going out <laughs> Wow. Going out to Bulgaria because it's a brand product. It's so much cheaper in the UK than it is in Bulgaria. And that kept them parvo free for a good, good few months. So it can be just as simple as doing something that small. And of course, it doesn't just relate to, to dogs. It can relate to charities, you know, like Alex's Wish or, or, or any of the bigger charities as well. It's What's Alex's acts. Wish? I don't think we know of Alex's Wish. Alex's Tell Wish? Oh, gosh. Now, you really ought to interview Emma. Now, talk about resilience. She's, she's your poster girl for it. 
Um, Emma uh, and her husband Andy welcomed their first son into the world, uh, little Alex, and at the age of four had the world pulled from under their feet uh, when they found that he had been diagnosed with the life-limiting illness Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, Duchenne is, is uh, mainly around, the boys are affected, I think it's about 2% okay. of girls do get affected with it as well, but it's mainly around boys, and it means that their muscles don't repair. So as their muscles wear and tear, they, they, they don't repair. Um, so ultimately, even though Alex is now 10, going into his 11th year, is considered middle-aged, um, at some point in the next two years, he's likely, if the, the disease progresses as, as it usually does, they expect him to be in a wheelchair. Uh, then he'll be bed bound, then he'll be tube fed, then he'll have somebody breathing, so a piece of machinery breathing for him, because obviously your biggest groups of muscles are your heart and your lungs. Um, and sadly, at the moment, there's no cure. Very few treatments. Uh, steroids really are the only effective treatment at the moment to try and prolong and keep them on the feet as long as they can. Everything works better. We're made to be on our feet. If we, we can keep on our feet for as long as possible, then life is just a heck of a lot better. That sounds incredible. It, it sound, all of it just sounds amazing. And everything that you're involved in, you do so much from the charity, from the work, from, you know, yeah. saving, rescuing dogs. How, how do you keep that balance yourself? How, <laughs> how, do, you, how, how do you find downtime and how, how does it work? Well, how do you recharge your batteries after doing so much and being involved in life-changing projects um well again uh, you know for me it comes down to having five dogs that need walking two hours in the morning two hours in the evening so i have to take time out because they have a need they need to physically move and, and migrate and have a wander and a sniff and a, a run and a play so you know again they they keep me reasonably sane but no i mean i think th i think there's a lot of work that could be done on, on keeping balance better if i'm honest um, and I do try and say no, and, and my business coach keeps saying, for God's sake, will you say no? But then if you can help and you, you can, and most of these things are not, they're not big things, they don't take long. Um, so, yeah, you just say, well, if I can help, I will. And you just fit it in, don't you? But yeah. as they say, if, ask not a busy many person, if you want something yeah. done, ask a busy person. So. Yeah, you, believe me, you fit in a hell of a lot. And on that, every, everything you've learned and the lessons that you've learned and how you've driven yourself forward... What would be your top three tips for other people in business or might be going through a bit of a difficult time? I, I think the first thing is, is I would suggest, I hope it doesn't sound flippant, are you going through a difficult time because you're, the expectations are, are somebody else's? Are, are you going through a difficult time because you've set yourself a goal that you really want to achieve and actually it's a bit tough? In which case, is it really going through a difficult time or is it just about, you know, Reevaluating is it the right goal? Have I got the right plan to get there? I think quite often when I feel like I'm going through a tough time, it's actually because I've, I've stopped following what Rachel needs to do and started listening to perhaps wider society or, you know, this is what you do because you're in business. And, and that's when I find I have a tough time. So if you're going through a tough time, just ask yourself the question, is this because I'm doing something that I want to do or I'm doing something that I feel I ought to do? Because sometimes that can bring some clarity. Um, it is the simple things. Just do take a pause. Just stop. You know, whether it's five minutes, you know, kicking a ball around with your, your kids or taking your dog for a walk or just sitting and doing nothing. Sometimes we live in such a crowded environment. And, you know, I know I run a PR agency, but with social media feeds and the media and news and, and not all of it's terribly positive, let's be honest. You know, sometimes just to unplug five, ten minutes breathe, chill, glass of water, glass of wine, glass of tea, whatever it is that you need, just can reboot you in a way that you know, perhaps more sophisticated or more challenging things don't. You know, sometimes it's the simple things in life that make the difference. And the third one I'd say is, is talk, because I know for years I spent my life not talking, not asking for help. But there are friends out there that you probably don't even know you've got. I didn't know I'd got as many friends as I did until I, I, I lost the first business. Um, and my friends came out of the woodwork and they came out in, in droves. I had people bring me food parcels and all sorts because it was quite a, quite a significant collapse of everything at the time. Um, but I didn't, I didn't even think of them as friends. I thought of them as colleagues or people I might know. But, you know, they're, they're friends. If people do that, then they've got to be a friend. Um, so, you know, ask for help, talk to people. You, you quite often find that you're not alone, that 
it, excuse my language, it's not a peeing competition, but other people <laughs> have gone through similar and might actually have you know, a little pearl of wisdom about how you can get out of it quicker or how you can make a shortcut that works for you or whatever it is. But ask, talk to people. If nothing else, you'll feel heard, you'll feel validated, you'll feel that you've shared something and got it off your, your shoulders and actually that might just help you to move faster forward. Wow, Rachel and Zoe, you, you are one, an incredible <laughs> businesswoman um, and definitely resilient, but also I just can't thank you enough for giving up your time, both of you today, because I know you've got a crazy busy schedule to be here. So thank you so much for your time, your energy and the inspiration. And I look forward to finding out more about Alex's wish. And, 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 and to the viewers, I think the, the takeaway message there is that there is so much to take away. Yeah, be bold, be brave but also just take five minutes out, five minutes out, just maybe to help someone or to help somebody else it can change everybody else's life around you. So take a pause and um, thanks for watching the interview with Rachel. Rachel, thanks again. Pleasure. Thank you.